critical for stuff like that is hold down. How are you going to hold it to the machine? Because that's the thing. You've got this board. As my bit contacts it, you've got a you know, 3,000 RPM higher spinning bit. You've got a hard material. It's just going to go flying or break the bit or whatever. Plus, when you hold down, you can't just use clamps or things because they're going to physically be in the way of the machine or there's no way to clamp through the machine. So you have to, when you're doing a project, you have to design a hold down as well as the project. And you might cut out a hold down with the CNC machine, but you'd have to have a hold down to do that too. So it's sort of like you start off with the table saw and the, you know, make whatever you can primitively do or whatever, and then you work your way up. Another issue is flattening the surface. Um, and this machine, the bed is pretty flat. With the shop bot, the larger ones, you know, you're putting it together when you assemble it. So that, you know, being eight feet long, there's more room for it to flux around as you're constructing it. So one of the first things you do is you use a planing bit and you put your spoiler board on there and you literally plane the whole thing off flat. And that way, you know you've got a flat surface compared to the tool because you've made the flat surface. And that, how many hours does that take, TJ? Uh, it's a good half hour file for a 4x8 sheet to get it flat. And then you chew up your board and then now you have to do it again. You have to do it step. again. So, yeah. So, part of your expense is also spoiler boards and, and clamps and, and hold downs. Are you going to cut something out today? I am going to cut something out. Um, I didn't bring it off or not. I threw this together to, to illustrate some different things. This is going to be a little card holder that we can put on the table at Maker Faire. So what we've got is we've got our logo on it, we've got a cutout, we've got some wooden gears, we've got a little handle so you can turn the one gear and it turns the other one, and then we've got a slot we can put business cards in. It takes four minutes to cut that out, the rest takes a couple of minutes. So. Essentially, it's going to cut out these pockets, it's going to cut out the holes. And when you design something, when you do tool paths, you have to think about it too in terms of, I wouldn't try to carve this detail in after I cut the wood out. Because there's little bitty things holding it, it's going to vibrate, it's going to break. So you sort of always work from the center outwards, or from the center in a clockwise spiral, and you do holes and details first, and then you go back working your way outward to big details until finally cutting out pieces in the end. All right, so that's what we're going to cut out over here. I'm going to get this machine, we're going to set it up. I've got it running on this little laptop. So essentially this is the CAD CAM software and then there's another piece of software that controls the shot plot itself. All right, so first we have to deal with hold down. What I've done since I always, for my kits, I always use this five and a half inch wide stuff. I've used an old woodworker's trick. And I've just got an angled piece of wood and the same angle of this piece of wood. So I've got a sliding uh, clamp. So this is clamped down. And you can see where I cut out my telegraph keys, where it cuts through there most of the time. So first thing I'm going to do, I've already got my V bit in here. So I'm going to let this thing warm up. I guess your different bits can go in the chuck farther. Is it, does it have a yeah, it has a hollow. Control? It has a hollow mandrel. So the 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 uh, collets for it. Here's a eighth inch collet. It comes with a quarter and a half, and then I bought this eighth inch. So and then it's hollow to about another inch. So you can put longer bits in it if you want to. So I guess with each bit, since it's not a solid <laughs> stop, then you gotta you gotta re. You have to re-zero re the Z for every time you change a bit. Exactly. Now on the on the bigger shop bot, you go through and zero all the bits because you put them all in a collet and then this is sitting in a holder basically. It's a different design but it's sitting in a holder. You zero each one and then it knows where zero is. So once you've done that once, it knows it and it can just grab the bit, cut it out, go back. So I'm just going to power it up. You hear the little fan come on, you hear some things wake up. This is lit up telling me what I've got it set to. I'm going to turn the, the RPM is not controlled by the software for this model. So you manually control it with this knob. I'm going to start it off at a low rate. And what I'm going to do is launch the Shopbot control software. All right, so on this little screen, essentially we've got the console window and we've got a manual control bar. This tells me X, Y, and Z where the machine is. And see, it woke up right here, so it thinks it's at zero, zero, and 0.25 inches. 
So I have to move it, zero it over here. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and warm it up. And to do that, I'm going to open this little panel. And we just have little toggle switches. I just do it this way. I just turn on that input and let it run. I don't, there's a routine, but I don't go through that. No. <laughs> so I just, uh, so you hear that. Real quiet until you turn on the additional shot button. And of course, this is a plastic safety cage and a dust collection. So I just made an adapter with it so I could put my small shot back into it. And uh, you can get into, you know, change the bit or whatever. These brushes aid and hold down. And this inner shoe, you know, presses down the material as well. So that kind of helps keep it from rocking around too bad. All right, now on the same control pad, I've got X, Y, and Z controls, and you can use your cursor keys. So I can manually move this around. So you can see the stepper motor is working to move it around. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use, this is the console window. You can actually type in commands here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zero the Z axis. So I'm going to take it manually and put it about here, which is about the center of what we're cutting. The kind of first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up this head a little bit to make sure I'm clear. So I'm just picking a spot more or less in the middle so I kind of average out any errors. So, next thing is you put this underneath your bit, you connect this to your spindle, and again, this is going to make a switch. If you look on the screen, you see this little, where it says input IMP, when I touch this together, see how that green light lights up? So that's basically another micro switch, so it knows that it's connected. So now I'm going to run the Z0 program which is this little button, zero the z-axis. It's going to give me a little alert. Hit enter when I'm ready. That little alarm says, hey, I'm about to move the machine. Get your hands out. It's going to go down until it touches it. Come back up. Come down again real slowly. And it's going to retract to one inch. It's subtracted this thickness. And it tells you, hey, idiot, put away the plate. Don't try to cut it. Huh. So this stores right over here. Oh, it's got idiot alarm. It's pretty cool. Yeah, oh, there's yeah. Okay, next I'm going to zero the X and the Y, which is going to be more or less this corner. And I've designed this stuff on this, so if I'm off, what little does it really matter? So I'm going to use the X and Y zero routine. It's going to run through all this code. So it comes on. It sounds like it. Yeah. Slow and make sure. Out those. What is it? Hmm? There's a little micro switch right over here. Yeah, see right there. There's this little. So it is a switch. And you got to keep these kind of clear of dust and stuff. Just as general maintenance goes. All right, now I've warmed it up. I've zeroed the Z, I've zeroed the X, and I've already a load cut. So, tool is now there. It tells me where it's at. I can move it around wherever I want. Now I'm going to load the file. And this one's in two pieces. The first is the prism cut that text. And instead of V carving it down, I'm prism carving. So I'm carving up to the lines of the V. It loads it at orange. Is tool number one in the spin? We're going to be hard. The kit note is the last thing I did yesterday, which is a flat mill, so it's a warning to I think you might have another tool. Do you or not? So, okay. Yes, it is. Is the Z axis zero? It's going to tell me to press this button to turn on the spindle. And if you don't hear the spindle speed up, I'm going to stop it. You can hit the space bar to stop it at any time. 
I'm incapacitated here in this place. Okay. <laughs> Alright, it spins up. carved letters. It just finished the first tool path with the first bit. So it chipped away a little bit at it and I can go in and clean that up with my little dentist pick a little bit to clean that up if I want to. I can also maybe adjust the depth. So next thing I'm going to do now is change bits. So I'm going to move this over. If you started out with the wood painted, it would be interesting. Yeah. So I'm going to lift my head up out of the way. Now it's keeping my X and Y. We'll reload this and then re-zero it. I presume it holds the X and Y zero. You just have to re-zero. It does. Y. It does. As long as the power doesn't go out, we're all right. Even if the power goes out, since we're relative to the table, we're still okay. Especially on this design, because it's not that critical if it gets off. And of course, you just want to snug it up. And then, once it's in there, I always like to spin it around and make sure that there's no visible run out. So that it's, you're not cocked in there or clean, clean sawdust out of it as you go or anything else. So, so now what we're going to do... It's going to come roughly zero again. We're going to re-zero it. On the Z. <laughs> All right, so now we're zero again with that bit. I'm going to jog home. So I'm just going to, you can come in here and manually type in coordinates you want to go to also. So if you want to move it around, I'm going to go to zero, zero. And this is going to go back home. And I always label my files if I'm doing more than one. I always put a dash and then label the tool I'm going to use with each file. Now in the file itself, it's a text file, and I'll show you that on the screen. But basically, it's just instructions. But this uses open shopbot code, which is similar to G code, but it actually has a programming language built in, too. So you can do strings and commands. And so you could program geometry by creating a rectangle and saying move Z and create another one and make loops and people. There's probably people that sit and program that Yeah, stuff, right so. to make sure it's... <laughs> yeah. I just want to draw it in print. That's right. I'm with you, man. So... <laughs> so, okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, Okay, accept the defaults. <laughs> is tool number three in the spindle? It warns me that I'm new. I have changed it, so yes it is. Is the z-axis zero? Yes. <laughs> Press the start button. Generally, if it's been on, it stays on as a relay, but I like to... I broke a bit one time, so I'm carrying it about that.
Alright, so it's finished cutting. So from idea to physical reality. And that will look nice on our little table. The Alamance Makers Guild is a group of talented and creative makers located in Alamance County, North Carolina, and is sponsored in part by Harris Educational, makers of reinventing science kits like Reinventing Edison Build Your Own Light Bulb.